Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Pollock, and today we're with Associate Professor Zachary Munn talking about rapid reviews. So, rapid reviews are the hot new evidence synthesis, especially during the time of COVID. What are rapid reviews? So that's a really good question, and yes, uh, rapid reviews are increasingly popular, and as you say, in these strange times, people are trying to get evidence synthesis done quicker. So people are talking even more about rapid reviews. Rapid reviews have been around for a while now, though, so people have been um, trying to find um, better ways to do evidence synthesis and systematic reviews in, in shorter time frames. So they have been around for quite some time. So the question about what is a rapid review uh, really boils down to, well, what is a systematic review? And then you need to decide, well, what steps constitute a systematic review? And then a rapid review essentially is a systematic review with shortcuts. So that means that you might be taking some, you might be skipping some of the steps or, or some of the um, requirements that you normally see in a systematic review. So for example, you might only have one person doing risk advice or critical appraisal rather than having two people do it in, in duplicate independently and then resolve differences. Or you might be limiting your searching. You might only search English language studies rather than searching um, all languages. So, so the way uh, we see rapid reviews are that they are um, systematic reviews with, sh with shortcuts. I think, uh, I think that's, that's the best way to say it. Now that sounds, it sounds like a bit like a little, little bit of a misnomer, doesn't it? Well, what is, why, what's, why do you talk about rapid, rapidness then? Well, the reason why we don't talk about time frames in at least the way I, or a lot of people classify rapid reviews is because you can still do full systematic reviews without taking shortcuts in short time frames in a rapid fashion. So saying that um, uh, because you did a systematic review in two weeks or in one month uh, and then saying it's a rapid review actually doesn't, it's a, it's a bit of a disservice to the author team if they've done a full systematic review process that met all the checks and balances. So that's why we don't use a, a time frame in the definition. Obviously you want to do rapid reviews quickly, but because you can do systematic reviews quickly as well and they haven't taken shortcuts, um, the definition normally around rapid reviews is about some sort of um, uh, methodological uh, abbreviations, let's say, um, rather than necessarily um, an acceleration of a full systematic review. Of course, you still try to try to do. Um, you might try to use software and whatnot to to speed up the process too. Yeah. So I think the question then comes: Is it the same quality of a systematic review? Well, uh, well, probably not. Um, and depending on what checklist you're using to assess the quality of a systematic review, whether it's um, AMSTAR 2 or, or Robus, um, there's probably going to be some shortcomings um, in, in most rapid reviews. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's okay. I think people who do rapid reviews are trying to do them in short time frames. Um, so, so to get them done quicker, they, they need to take some of these, some of these shortcuts. Um, um, uh, because either they need to do them quicker or, 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 or there's not enough funding or resources or, or you're in an urgent situation and you need an urgent answer. So, um, so no, they probably won't score as high, I guess, on, on risk of bias or critical appraisal instruments for systematic. So for the new rapid reviewer, and yes. we may have a few coming yeah. due to this time, Yes. Are, or has there been any clear guidance on how to do them? So different groups are trying to come up with guidance and advice and there, there, are, there is guidance and advice on how you can do a rapid review. But it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all approach, which makes it a little bit tricky to come up with guidance and advice for doing rapid reviews because uh, you may be making choices about what steps you abbreviate uh, based on how quickly you need to answer the question or um, how much money the fund has given you. So, so um, in terms of what shortcuts, for example, you select um, uh, might depend on uh, whether you need to get an answer in a week or in two weeks, or if you've got a small pot of funds uh, supporting a rapid review compared to a large 
pot of funds supporting a review. So there's no, uh, I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong way to do a rapid review. Um, and you know, in the most urgent of situations, you might need to try to find an answer incredibly quickly uh, in a day or two. In an emergency situation, for example. So the most important thing, as with any evidence emphasis approach, is that you are very transparent in what, you, you, what you've done and that you justify it as well. And of course, acknowledge any limitations in your report as well. So how do these rapid reviews uh, then get implemented into policy and practice or even guidelines? So, so that's a really good question, and often, often it is from from funders or policymakers or, or other groups who are looking for an urgent, urgent response. So, so essentially, the review team will, will come up with their summary and then their implications, and then perhaps uh, work with the, the the group to try to come up with some some um, decisions or recommendations. Um, and then, how do they get implemented into practice? Well, that's that's another kettle of fish, I guess. That's uh, where we start getting into implementation science and evidence implementation. Yeah. So, what are your top tips? Yes. On a good rapid review. Okay. Well, I don't think there's actually a tool at the moment to assess necessarily the uh, quality of a rapid review. I guess you could use um, AMSTAR or Rovers, but there are a lot of discussions and methodological development going on about this. I think, I think the top tips that I, I would say are uh, try to be as systematic as possible. Try, try not to take as many shortcuts um, as you can, so don't take as many shortcuts. Uh, and always be transparent in your, in your decision making. Um, so always be transparent about why, why you might have skipped some steps and, and acknowledge these as limitations. But I will, I will also say if you're trying to do these in a short time frame, and for uh, a smaller pot of money um, because you have less resources, then also take advantage of um, software and tools that, might, that you might be able to access. And there are a lot of different software and tools and applications for supporting systematic reviews, um, which can help automate the process. So are there any resources that you would recommend? Well, uh, JBI Summary is fantastic, which is the JBI software for systematic reviews. Uh, and I would always always recommend people to check out the JBI resources for sure. Uh, but there are a lot. There there are, there are literally hundreds of tools that you can use as well. Uh, an interesting resource or catalog of tools is called the Systematic Review Toolbox, and you can actually search for all different tools uh, that can support the systematic review process. So that's that's very useful as well. Thank you for a great discussion on rapid reviews. My pleasure. Thank you.